the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how krishna killed the arrogant king shishupala and helped yudhishthira complete his rajasuya sacrifice after the conclusion of the rajasuya sacrifice duryodhana decided to stay back in indraprastha for few more days dushashana Shakuni and Karna also stayed back to accompany him. As Duryodhana walked through the streets of Indraprastha, the beauty of the city and its opulence amazed him. The barren land of Kandava, to which Dhritarashtra for all practical purposes had banished the Pandavas, was transformed into this fantastic city. It was beyond his wildest dreams. But when Duryodhana stepped into the palace and assembly hall built by maya he was dumbfounded the illusionary designs fooled duryodhana at every step at one spot he mistook the clear crystal floor as a pool of water and lifted his clothes before treading on but the moment his foot hit the hard floor he realized his mistake and felt embarrassed for his foolishness he moved on to another area which had a similar pool like appearance with crystal clear still water and lotus blossoms determined not to be fooled again duryodhana stepped into it and everybody around heard a loud splash <coughs> it was a real pool and duryodhana sat in the water soaked to the bone the sashan and karna pulled him out of the water while the servants turned around to hide their laughter <laughs> but duryodhana was looking above in the corridors where the pandava brothers bhima and arjuna along with draupadi were rolling in laughter the sound of their laughter especially that of draupadi pierced his ears like hot lava his blood boiled in rage but he could do nothing hearing the laughter yudhishthira came out and scolded his brothers stop laughing go and help brother duryodhana he called out to the servants why are you standing there go and get some dry clothes for duryodhana the servants rushed to bring fresh dry clothes for him arjuna and bhima came to assist but duryodhana refused to accept any help he put on the dry clothes and walked away towards what he thought was a doorway instead it was a wall made of transparent crystal and duryodhana banged into it and broke his nose he sat down holding his bleeding nose while the servants ran to get some first aid duryodhana again heard draupadi's laughter ring through the halls shakuni and karna pulled him up but the insulted prince shook them off and walked towards the door leading to the corridor outside duryodhana pushed the door hard to open it and fell face down straight onto the ground for it was a real opening and the door was only an illusion duryodhana could hear the laughter again frustrated he turned around and looked for some exit to get away from this bizarre palace he approached another doorway but but he was hesitant to proceed he looked at it for a while but couldn't figure out if it was real or an illusion afraid of being fooled again he turned around in search for another doorway with dushashana shakuni and karna following him again and again the great kaurava prince of hastinapur was embarrassed and humiliated to the core right away he left for hastinapur the fire of envy was burning in him like a huge furnace and he vowed to take revenge on the pandavas for this disgraceful humiliation Shakuni lived in a small room in one corner of the palace in Hastinapur. The room was dark, 
with occasional shafts of light illuminating some parts of the darkness. Decorated with black and grey drapery, the room was filled with dead stuffed snakes and vultures which cast large shadows on the walls. Sitting in one corner of the room, Shakuni was practicing his favorite board game, the game of dice. After years of practice and skillful tampering of the dice, Shakuni became an expert in the game. He could almost command the dice to roll into any pattern he wished. Shakuni picked up the pair of dice, closed his eyes, and after a quick shake, threw them to the board. His eyes gleamed in joy to see the dice roll down and stop with the exact pattern he wished for. Just then, he heard footsteps approaching the door behind him. Shakuni turned around and saw Duryodhana waiting at the door. Shakuni stood up to greet Duryodhana. Welcome, welcome, my dear nephew. Come in, come in, please. Duryodhana didn't care to return the greeting. He walked into the room with a gloomy face and sat down in one of the chairs next to a dead python mounted on a tree branch. Shakuni knew what was plaguing Duryodhana. Still, he feigned ignorance and asked, What happened, my dear nephew? You look so gloomy and depressed. What's bothering you? Duryodhana looked at Shakuni and said, Don't act dumb, Uncle Shakuni. You know perfectly well what's bothering me. Shakuni closed the door behind him and walked close to Duryodhana. Well, I can guess, but I cannot read your mind. <laughs> and one should not guess the intentions of the future king of Hastinapur. So, why don't you tell me? The wealth and prosperity of the Pandavas is killing me. I cannot take it any more, growled Duryodhana. With Arjuna's help, Yudhishthira has conquered the whole world. After completing the Rajasuya sacrifice, he is now the emperor of the world. And you ask, what's bothering me? Uncle, I am burning inside, burning in envy, burning in jealousy. I haven't had a single minute of peace since I left Indraprastha. Didn't you see how they treated us in Indraprastha? Those imbecile kings, they lined up like simple peasants and farmers to pay their taxes. None had the courage to stand up and protest when Krishna killed our dear friend Shishupala. Every day, every day the Pandavas are growing in power, growing in strength and I am sitting here doing nothing. Shame on me! It's better to die than live this humiliating life. Shakuni touched Duryodhana's shoulder to comfort him. <laughs> Is that any reason for you to die? The Pandavas are enjoying their good fortune. They have received their share of the kingdom and have prospered because of their might and valor. Why do you feel bad about that? Arjuna pleased Agni to receive his Gandiva bow and the inexhaustible pair of kivers along with other divine weapons. With the help of those weapons, he forced the kings to surrender to Yudhishthira. That's nothing to sulk about. And why do you feel insulted and humiliated by the deceitful and clever designs of Maya? The palace of illusions was built to please the Pandavas and not to trick you. Shake off your malaise and be the man you are. You are not alone. You have your gallant brothers with you. You have the mighty warriors like Drona. Ashwatthama, Kripa, Karna and myself by your side. Together, you too can conquer the world if you desire. Shakuni's inspiring speech boosted Duryodhana's ego once again. He said, Uncle, if you so advise and with the help of our gallant Kuru warriors, I want to conquer the world and force all the kings to submit under my rule, even the Pandavas. Shakuni smiled and said, 
my dear nephew. Even the gods can defeat the mighty Pandava brothers who enjoy allies like Vasudeva Krishna, King Drupada and his gallant son Dhrishtadyumna. But I know how to conquer Yudhishthira. Would you care to listen? Duryodhana was eager to hear any plan that would help him take his revenge. He asked, Please, please tell me uncle, I am open to any suggestion. Shakuni pulled a seat and sat down facing Duryodhana. In the dark room, his face looked as vicious as the stuffed vulture that perched behind him. Listen to me carefully. He almost whispered into Duryodhana's ears. Yudhishthira loves to play the game of dice and is quite addicted to it. If you challenge him to a game, he won't refuse you. I will play on your behalf and you know nobody can beat me in this game. I will defeat him with ease and win all his possessions for you. Duryodhana's eyes sparkled in greed. He said, but, but what if he refuses to play the game? Trust me, he won't. Especially if your father, King Tritarashtra, invites him. All you have to do is ask your father. A smug smile flashed on Shakuni's face. But Duryodhana was skeptical. He wasn't quite sure if his father would approve of this devious plan. He said, I I can't ask father. You'll have to do this. Shakuni stood up. All right, I will ask him. Join me at your father's chamber tomorrow morning. The next morning, Shakuni and Duryodhana visited Dhritarashtra in his chamber. The blind king had just finished his breakfast and was getting ready to leave for the royal court. Shakuni greeted the king and said, O king, I have a complaint. My nephew Duryodhana is suffering from severe depression. He has lost weight. His face looks pale. And if this sickness continues for long, I am afraid we might lose him forever. I don't know what's bothering him. You are his father. Why don't you inquire him and do something about this? Shakuni's blunt words worried Tritarashtra. He called Duryodhana to his side and asked, My son, why are you depressed? I have made you the crown prince and gave you immense wealth to cover all your expenses. We, your brothers and your friends, love you. You have all that a man could ask for and enjoy all the luxuries a man could imagine. Still you are not happy. Why? Duryodhana sat down next to his father's feet and said, Yes, father, I have all that one could ask for. But like a coward, I am enjoying those sumptuous meals, wearing my expensive clothes, enjoying the company of beautiful women, and just passing time doing nothing. While our enemies are busy growing their strength and increasing their wealth, we are getting weaker and poorer every passing day. Father, This futile existence makes me angry. It makes me sick to the core. I have seen the wealth and prosperity of Yudhishthira during the Rajasua ceremony. Thousands of kings and Brahmins poured in carts full of gold, silver and other jewels into his coffers. When Vasudeva Krishna coronated Yudhishthira as the emperor of the world, I felt like puking. I shuddered when the conch shell rang out each day to announce the completion of the daily meals for one million Brahmins. He employs thousands of educated men, millions of servants and guards in the palace. I am sure Yudhishthira's riches even surpass the wealth of Indra, Yama, Varuna and Kuvera taken together. Father, since I witnessed the prosperity of the Pandavas, I have been burning inside with envy and jealousy. We must do something. Else, else I will kill myself. Dhritarashtra was scared. No, no, don't even entertain such ominous thoughts. Tell me, uh, what do you want me to do? 
Duryodhana said, Uncle Shakuni has a plan to win all of Yudhishthira's possessions in a game of dice. Uncle Shakuni is unbeatable in this game and I trust him. Please grant us your permission to go ahead. Tritarashtra was taken aback when he heard this. I, I, I will consult Vidura about this and then decide. He is wise and, and I believe he will suggest the right path that would be the best for both the parties. Duryodhana stood up and said, Father, we all know what Vidura would suggest. He would never approve of this plan. I will kill myself and you can live happily with your stepbrother Vidura. Duryodhana started to walk towards the exit door. Thritarashtra panicked. He said, stop, stop, don't go. Let's, let's discuss this before we come to any conclusion. Your cousin Yudhishthira doesn't hate you. He and you have the same grandfather. You are both of the great Kuru dynasty. Why do you want to acquire your cousin's wealth? You are no less than him in wealth or power. If you wish to earn more wealth, acquire more power and influence, then do the right thing. Call the priests and the sages, perform some fire ceremony, conquer kingdoms, and you will have just as much wealth as the Pandavas. But refrain from doing what is unjust and immoral. Duryodhana was not in a mood to hear any lectures on morality. He snapped back at Dhritarashtra. Father, why do you want to impose the thoughts of others on me? One who cannot think for himself can never understand the real meaning of the scriptures. O king, listen to this. For a Kshatriya, winning is everything. That's his only goal. He shouldn't cloud his thoughts thinking of what is moral and what is not. Nowhere it is defined who is a friend or who is a foe. I understand only one definition. One who inflicts pain on me is my enemy. Shakuni added, The wealth of Yudhishthira that is causing you so much pain can be yours. Invite Yudhishthira to a game of dice and I will win you all that he owns for you. <laughs> I think he will acknowledge that nobody can play this game the way I can. Yudhishthira has no chance against me. Not a drop of blood will be shed from either side. And the victory will be yours. I promise. Tritarashtra was still hesitant. He said, but this is a serious matter. Any misunderstanding can result in grave consequences, even an all-out war. I have always consulted Vidura in matters like this. Duryodhana interrupted him and said, Father, you know very well Vidura has always favored the Pandavas. And if you ask him again, he will do so again. But why are you so concerned about a simple game of dice? People played this game and gambled since the ancient times. They have never resulted in wars. Gambling involves luck and it can either favor us or the Pandavas. The odds are the same for both sides. You should stop thinking about the consequences and as Uncle Shakuni suggests, invite the Pandavas to play the game. Dhritarashtra had no other option but to succumb to his son's demands. He ordered his architects to build a special hall where the game would be played. When the hall was completed, he called Vidura and said, Vidura, please go to Indraprastha and invite the Pandavas to visit us and to see this hall. I would like to inaugurate this hall uh, with a friendly game of dice between Yudhishthira and Duryodhana. Vidura could guess what the king had in his mind. He said, O king, I cannot support your decision. I must warn you, gambling is a dangerous sport 
and it can result in a nasty feud amongst your sons and nephews. Dhritarashtra said, It's only a game, Vidura. Besides, who are we to control our destiny? If conflict is our destiny, then conflict will happen, whether the game is played or not. So stop thinking negative and carry out my orders for now. I'd love to meet Yudhishthira after all these years. Saying so, Dhritarashtra retired to his quarters. Vidura stood there for a while and shook his head in frustration. Then he slowly walked back to the administrative building to prepare for his long journey to Indraprastha. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Balmik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any podcast catcher. <laughs>